Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. A um, couple of announcements. First of all, we have a conference coming up November uh, 12 through 14 in Columbus. We have very limited seating because we're doing this in the office. But if you are remote and you would, you're not planning to come to Columbus and be with us, um, $169 for, non, for members and $199 for non-members, and you can watch the conference remote You can uh, in your own home. So we're going to broadcast it. We'll also uh, video um, record it. And if you can't join us live for the whole weekend, but you want to watch the videos, you'll have access to those. So both the people who attend the conference and the people who buy the remote access will have access to the online videos. So you can fill out a registration form by going to our website at wellnessfarmhealth.com. Um, the other thing is, remember, we are um, just one week into our 60-day uh, Defeat Breast and Prostate Cancer campaign. How this works is you sign a pledge card that you're going to take better care of yourself, all right, which I want all of you to do, regardless of all this insanity going on. Us being healthy is helpful, right? So you sign a pledge card, you get a $100 gift certificate, which you can use toward our courses. Get 25 other people to sign the pledge card and you get another $100 certificate. So you have $200 to invest toward um, uh, one of our courses that you've been dying to take, but this would reduce the cost. All right. So um, just send me an email to pampopper at msn.com. I'll make sure that the right person in my office gets it. And um, of course, school starts, I think tomorrow is the first day. So those of you who waited till the last minute, that's always fun for us, but we will still accommodate you. So go on ahead and send me an email if you want to get yourself enrolled in school. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is the gut bacteria, the gut microbiome and COVID. Um, I'm gonna give you the short version on this video and then I'm going to have a longer version in next week's newsletter um, because some of the statistics and that kind of thing just are not much fun to tell you over video but lend themselves to a long article. And I think that this is something you might wanna share with people. So. The gut microbiome plays a major role in human among, uh, immune function. In fact, the gut is the largest immune organ in the body. Most people don't know that. Therefore, you will not be surprised to hear that there's a connection between the gut microbiome and COVID-19. In fact, a study that was published very early, like back in April when this debacle began, reported that 20% of those who had confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection had gastrointestinal symptoms and two thirds of infected people shed viral RNA in their feces. Over 60% of the patients continued to shed viral uh, RNA in their feces after PCR tests showed that they had um, uh, negative results. They'd obviously cleared the infection. Even more more important, it's now clear that people who have dysbiosis, which means that they've lost some of the beneficial bacteria um, and have more pathogenic bacteria, and they've also lost diversity. You're supposed to have a lot of diverse, uh, different microorganisms in your gut. Well, people who have dysbiosis um, have worse uh, COVID outcomes and longer recovery time than those who have healthier microbiomes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the mechanism of action. I'll share with you just a couple of the studies that have been done. SARS-CoV-2 has an affinity for the ACE2 receptors. You've heard about that a lot, I'm sure, uh, which are found throughout the human body. And they are also found in the mucosal lining of the human gut. It's thought that the ACE2 receptors play a role in regulating the microbiome. They contribute to it. They are not solely responsible for it. And that when you become infected, um, this interferes with the regulatory system. So in order to look at specifically how SARS-CoV-2 affects the gut or the gut affects SARS-CoV-2, researchers in Hong Kong analyzed the microbiomes of 15 patients who tested positive in March of 2020. They took two to three fe uh, fecal samples each week until the patients were discharged from the hospital. Now at that time, um, if you tested positive in Hong Kong, you were hospitalized regardless of whether or not you had any symptoms. All of the patients um, who were hospitalized had increased levels of pathogenic bacteria and reduced levels of beneficial bacteria as compared to healthy controls. 
Those who were treated with antibiotics were even more depleted in terms of colonies of the good guys versus um, bad guys. They had higher colonies of pathogenic bacteria. And then the degree of dysbiosis was directly related to the severity of symptoms and continued after the patients had cleared the infection. In other words, for these people, clearing the infection did not make their guts go back to normal. And we'll talk how to, about how to make that happen in just a couple minutes here. A larger study of 100 patients um, confirmed these results and also reported that higher levels of pathogenic bacteria were associated with higher levels of inflammatory cytokines. Follow-up with these patients also showed a link between a damaged gut microbiome and persistent symptoms, which we sometimes hear that referred to as long COVID. People who completely recovered had a microbiome similar to those who were never infected but those who uh, were very, very sick continued to have dysbiosis, and that's one of the reasons why their symptoms uh, probably persisted. Still more evidence for the connection between COVID-19 and the gut microbiome is the fact that people who are diabetic or obese or have high blood pressure are at higher risk of COVID, and these patients are known to have gut dysbiosis. So again, I'll just tell you some tips about what to do about this, and then you can look for the longer version of this in the newsletter with references. This will be a long referenced article. Um, but the first thing is if you have taken, the first thing I would tell you is regardless of whether or not you have any gut symptoms, um, uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, if you've taken antibiotics or NSAIDs or steroid drugs or drugs that interfere with the microbiome or damage it in any way, you'd be a great candidate to take a probiotic and fix that now. It may protect you uh, because it would strengthen your immune system since the gut is the largest immune organ in the body and the microbiota plays a uh, major role in that. Um, if you have any type of gastrointestinal symptoms, you have reflux, you have gas and bloating or diarrhea or constipation or, you know, the whole host of things that people right now it's common should not be, but it's, these things are so common. You also might want to look at changing your diet because your diet affects your gut microbiome and, um, and also taking a probiotic. Um, so these things certainly aren't gonna guarantee that you don't get sick and, and uh, that sort of thing, but um, definitely having a gut that's in good shape is good for you in many, many ways, even beyond immune function. Certainly, if you're trying to prevent yourself from becoming infected with anything, including SARS-CoV-2, um, and gastrointestinal discomfort is no fun for anybody, so you'd like to get rid of those symptoms anyway, you can do something about that, right? And then for, um, uh, you know, as part of the arsenal of people who do become sick with SARS-CoV-2, taking a probiotic may be helpful um, in, in terms of, not by itself, but in conjunction with other things that uh, are used for treatment, adding a probiotic to the regimen may um, go a long way in preventing long COVID or reducing long COVID and that sort of thing. So um, I think this is real important information. As I mentioned, I'll have a long, very well-referenced article in the newsletter that you can pass on to others next Monday. All right, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.